Hello, everyone. We're back. And I've got Elena with me. <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> um, I'm really excited to have Elena, um, who's going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, uh, which is SEO and CRO together. All right? Because a lot of, I think for many years, everyone's been looking at it as a silo. These are two separate things, but no. Um, so um, Aleda, to me, is the queen of SEO. I've said this to you a few times. I learn everything that's um, SEO from her all the time. Um, and yeah, I'm going to just hand it to you so you can just get started. Um, I'm going to turn off our videos and uh, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Talia. So what I'm going to do now is to share my screen, right? Because you're still not seeing it yet or? Yep, share your screen. Perfect. Now I am going to share it. Great. So I, I was going to ask uh, to start asking like, how many of you are already doing SEO? But I guess it's a little bit <laughs> difficult in this, in this type of format. But don't worry, don't worry. I think it's going to, there's going to be a little bit everything for, a little bit of something for everybody in, in this session. And really what, what Talia was mentioning, but if, and, and this was actually one of the questions from, from yesterday during the, the, the AMA that we did over over uh, the Google Hats um, um, platform, right? Like a, a, a few people were asking, how do conversion and SEO work together? How do we maximize the, the value, right? And for me, it's about this, that uh, SEO should work well with any other traffic channel and, disi and discipline and also with, with uh, CRO because at the end of the day, the goal that uh, they are all trying to focus on and, 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 and to achieve is the same. It's to maximize the site ROI, it's to connect with the customers, it's to be able to perform the, 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 any transaction or any activity that we are willing to get from, from our audience really. So this presentation is going to be about that, how to connect your SEO to what your customers really, really want. And for me, this is actually the unique selling propositions versus other channels. When, when a client or a potential client or any company really asks me like, why should we be doing SEO and not any other, like, I don't know, affiliate or, or, or any other type of, of, of um, online publicity or, or advertising, right? It's about this. Is that at the end of the day with SEO, what we have is an amazing bridge uh, to connect with our audience, with our customers, at the very moment where they are searching for the services, those products, that information that our clients can provide. So we have on, on one hand the, the audience and uh, on another uh, hand the, the, the website and, and search results are the bridge that both connect and where we can maximize and we should be looking to maximize our, our, our clients' visibility in order to connect with them. So it's about that. Connect with your search audience with a highly relevant offering that drives ROI. And this sometimes is what is missing in SEO processes, right? Because a lot of people focus uh, on, on doing SEO in a way that is not necessarily connected together, in a way that is very well aligned with overall marketing and customer uh, type of information that will really allow not only to bring any type of, of traffic, but really maximize the traffic to, 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 to really actually achieve those type of goals that we are looking uh, to get from a conversion perspe perspective. And, and this is the key of, of everything for me. So your audience search behavior should be there for the one that drive your SEO process. And this is it. We have the, that our audience have X or Y type of, 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 of activities and they are looking for products or services in certain ways that and we are going to see now how we can identify these different ways, right? Using certain terms uh, in, 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 from certain devices, from certain locations, uh, with a certain type of seasonality, with a certain type of trends, right? And we should be able to identify all of this information in order to connect with, with, with them at the right time, uh, with the right type of content in order to, to, to really achieve the, the type of goals that we are, we are, we are looking to, to obtain for our clients. Um, so it is key 
uh, to start any SEO process with a, with a keyword research, as I am showing right now on screen, um, this should drive everything else. Technical optimization, content optimization, content promotional in building, and of course, what we should be monitoring afterwards should be about this too. Allow me to, oh, for some reason now, I think that my computer has stopped. Are you still listening to me? This is like Morphe's law. All of a sudden, this is not working anymore. Let me see. Let me see. Hello, hello. Are you still seeing my screen? I'm sorry, very sorry. Yes, I think that you are. But yeah, perfect. Oh my God. Uh, all of a sudden I was having like a little, oh my God, you're not seeing it. Now it's working better. Let's see, I'm going to, I think that maybe the quality is too big and this is why having these issues. But anyway, sorry for that. Now you're, if you're able to say this, right? So this is it. The audience search behavior should drive everything else. The what, the when, the where, what we should be publishing, what information, uh, what it should be our content about, should drive the relevance uh, type of activities and optimizations that we do with our content, when and where in, 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 in our website we should be uh, indexing and crawling that content, right? Not only from a relevance perspective. So all this is critical and important that we take into consideration in our overall process. Let me see. For some reason, I am again having this problem passing the slides. I don't know if it is now. Now it is. Okay, perfect. So this is what I had showed you before about the keyword research, driving everything else. And again, oh, I'm, I don't know why. And again, for some reason, I am still having, allow me to check or to, instead of showing my presentation and i'm very sorry about this on that's okay we can still see on here. keynote yeah no problem on keynote i am going to share it as a pdf because i believe that there's something going on with uh, my keynote that is maybe consuming so much memory or something that i will and i'm very sorry about all this technicalities right now <laughs> to be showing this through the pdf otherwise i'm afraid that we will be and you know what? This is happening with a brand new MacBook, which 16 gigabytes of RAM. So uh. I, I told you you don't get, but I'm not gonna say. It. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's see. I'm going to export this now. Hopefully, it will be much, much easier to to share it uh, with a PDF and not necessarily with the actual file, big keynote file. This is all my fault. I assume it. And now I'm going to get out of here. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see if it works better now. With Adobe, please be my friend now. I'm going to get out of here because I think it's keynote that is consuming a lot of memory. Okay, my apologies for this. And again, let's see if this actually works. If for some reason this is not working, I blame everything on Mac. <laughs> okay, so allow me to now share my screen completely here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we can see our screen. Perfect. Okay, and let's see if in this case, you're able to, I am able to pass it on as, as I should. Let me, oops, oops, oops. Or if it is still going very, very slow. I think it's still going very slow for some reason. Oh my, let me, yeah, well, this was the next slide that I show, and this is the next slide. Yeah, the problem is that in general, the slides are going very slow for some reason. Okay. Let's see if I am able to do this even with my now somehow slow all of the sudden computer. So this is the next slide. To be customer oriented and successful, forget about silver bullet SEO tips. And this is something very important and really my, a little bit of the highlight of, of this presentation, right? That uh, in general, you shouldn't be looking to start doing SEO from scratch without doing a keyword research, a keyword research that I was telling you before 
and everything should be drive, driven by these questions. The why and why, the when and where. Because at the end of the day, asking these questions will allow us to identify who is our audience, what are really our customers looking for, and how we can drive everything that we do in SEO and our efforts to, in order to connect with them. So let's answer all of these questions and uh, let's develop the right and relevant and straightforward keyword research that we look for. And we are going to see how we can align everything else and our SEO efforts and optimization efforts to, to make the most out of it. So what? Why are your users already looking for it? The typical um, initial keyword research question, right? And, and, and uh, uh, there's a lot of already existing data in your Google Search Console. Uh, let, let's go and identify per category and per product and per every line of service, which are the top queries that are already being searched, which are the ones driving more clicks, more impressions, better or worse CTRs, better or worse positions, because this will be a very important initial input uh, of how your users are already behaving and interacting with your site. And uh, what queries are your competitors ranking with already? You can use SEMrush, Systrix, Ahrefs, there are so many tools out there. But I really love SEMrush because you can see they allow us to do this type of uh, uh, comparison between domains here. For example, uh, Jansport versus Amazon, versus Ebex, versus, versus Deuter, versus Eastpac, if we are uh, um, uh, a website trying to sell, for example, backpacks. So what we should do this with our own site versus the competitors and then take a look at the, what our, our industry leaders are already doing, how they are targeting this, these queries and which are the top queries they're already. And with all of this input, we should do this. We should do a, a matrix of every type of action characteristic product that we identify the type of, of queries that we identify, the brands that we identify, the location. It, it, it doesn't need to be a physical location, because, and this is very important because we, we are going to see how a lot of people now with, with mobile devices, they are searching for with terms like around me or nearby or near me, right? So it's very, very important that we identify all of these type of patterns that uh, we have gathered from our own website and from, from our com competitors and, and, and to see how they can connect with each other like this. Uh, it's important to, and, and of course, I know that many of you have already done a keyword research and, uh, in the past and, and, and know that the, the more generic a term is, uh, the more popular it will be, but also the less, um, the less specific, the less relevant. Uh, less, and likely, they will likely generate less conversions to our website. So it's something that we need to, um, to use in a way that will actually be relevant to what we specifically want to sell, want to provide, and, and are able to offer with our website offering, right? So it's with all of these patterns that we have identified before, let's take them and let's start combining them in a way that, of course, makes sense in our relevant language, in our specific language. But then we can identify actual more opportunities uh, diversify and expand and to obtain more ideas of which are really the questions that are being asked by our, by our audience. What additional related queries are search about this topic's permutation? And I love the way that actually SEMrush um, showed this with their keyword magic tool because if you see to the left side that I have marked over there, they already categorized all of these terms uh, with uh, the, the different permutations, selecting the different terms that are repeated again and again. Like for example, if I search for school backpacks, like in this case, they will show all of the search volume for all of them, the average difficulty for all of them, and, and list all of the queries like this. But then I can go and see that a lot of, of, of terms are repeated again and again, they're about high because of high school, years, best, middle, kids, um, back, back to school, right, or backpack, boy, uh, cool, large, good. So this already gives me a very, very good idea. On one hand, what type of filters, what kind of options will it be relevant for me to provide on my site and to, 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 to actually index on my site from an SEO perspective, because these are worthy, these are actually popular, and these are already used by my audience. And then what were the actual questions that are being asked about them? Let's remember that it's not necessarily like, well, the keywords are being asked, but actual questions like searches are much more conversational nowadays. And, and, and I love that more and more tools are providing these questions filters like the one that I'm showing right now. Uh, so we actually, this is 
I did this, this, this goal for me because it's so much easier now uh, to be able to provide recommendations and, and coordinate well the, with, with the, the, the content specialists, the copywriters, um, to develop ideas that won't be necessarily only transactional driven, but also those that will help to, to, to develop information and, and resources for the blog. For example, these, these are golden. So we can see that, for example, people is asking uh, for, for questions like, what is the best backpack for school? How to make your backpack lighter for school? Uh, what backpack should I get for middle school? Etc. Etc. Right. So and this is great. These are questions that might not necessarily be the questions that are necessarily transactional driven again, but very very important to 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 answer to in 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 the customer journey process in order to maximize your visibility at every uh, single point and 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 improve the chances that our customers end up converting up with us. Then, what content form and search features can you get more visibility? Uh, from and, and this is the one thing um, many years ago the way that you will get results from SEO was to getting just better positions in, in, in search results of course we know that still right now right people tend to click on the first results in a much much higher uh, percentage and 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 the, the clicks of sure that the first result gets is much much higher than than the second position third position and so on however the reality nowadays is that it's not only through a good positions that you can get clicks and visits and traffic from, from SEO, from, from organic search, but also through uh, search features. Um, the different um, information that Google is now enabling and showing in, in, in search results, from site links to feature snippets uh, to knowledge graph, instant answers, and also all the type of formats that you can run with, like images or videos, right? So it is. For me, it is key because this will allow you to really identify which are those um, queries for which it is really worthy for you to not only create content, text content, but also it's really profitable, will be profitable to, to create a video for or, or images or an infographics to run with. Because we really want to validate that goal is already showing this type of results for these queries. And, it, and, and it's so, so easy because, again, in this case, SEMrush SCM, uh, allows uh, you to identify this information at an industry level. They have this called SEMrush sensor, uh, and they show you the, the search features by country and for every single industry. So you can see the amount of, of serves are showing local packs or feature snippets or top stories or uh, knowledge panels or feature video, things like that. And then you can, of course, also take a look at the ones that are being shown for your competition, for your own website nowadays, and for any given query and term that you are searching for, that you are doing the keyword research for. So you go and you see, and, and I have Mark here on, on my screen, um, this um, filter that they allow you to to, to, to select to see to see only those queries those terms for which certain feature snippets are, are being shown so for here for example we know that these three keywords these three questions how to pack a backpack for school how to pack a school backpack how to make your backpack lighter for school these three questions are showing feature snippet images and reviews so if we are creating this type of content we better make sure to 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 implement a structured data that will generate reviews uh, make sure to include a few images there because we know that our, 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 our results can be highlighted there. And then also other tools like SEO Monitor that connect with Google Analytics and the Google Search Console will not only allow you to track these keywords, uh, to track these terms, uh, but while tracking, they also track the search features that are shown uh, in any of the search, that search results that you are ranking for. So they won't only tell you for those ones that you are already ranking, but those ones that are already being shown in your search results that you might not necessarily still be profiting from. So in this case, for example, they, they are telling me that for a certain keyword uh, that I am already ranking number one, so yay me, but there, I am not being included in those video results. Uh, and there are two results in the top 10. And very likely when Google shows video results, they they show a very important uh, thumbnail, uh, very visible thumbnail. So, hey, I am losing a big opportunity here. And very likely, 
my number one result is not getting so many clicks as it could because there are videos shown in that same page. So this is something very important also to take into consideration for, to, to, to align the format and, and the type of content that, that I, will, I will develop in my, in my SEO process and also the type of efforts that will be really worth it for me to implement in my SEO process. Um, it's, it's also important to not only rely on one source of data, at the end of the day, these sources try to replicate a little bit of what Google really is, really is actually doing. However, it's, that is very difficult. That is why, for example, do that with Keyword Finder, do that with Systrix, do that with many tools, as many tools as you can have access to. I actually created this matrix here that I'm showing uh, that you have on my website. Uh, where I included all of the most popular keyword tools and which are the ones that give you mobile data, uh, seasonality data, like different type of international data, etc., etc., that you can use. After we identify the what, we can answer the why. Why people are looking for this? Why are these queries being asked? Why, what's the intent behind these queries? Like, and this is the one thing that we need to take into consideration that people, we, never, we don't only search in Google when we are ready to buy something. We search in Google while looking for ideas, discovering new brands that we have heard of, uh, looking for opinions and reviews to validate that uh, review that we read somewhere about one brand being very cool and, and a backpack being like very comfortable to, to go with. And seeing if there are any type of offers going on, like for example, now that is summer, uh, that, is, that if there are big summer offers or promos or coupons that we can make the most out of at, at this point, right? And, and to compare products and features with all the brands, for example, or to validate if, if there's product availability nearby because maybe I don't want to do the transaction online completely, right? So it's very, very important that we keep this in mind when segmenting and focusing and connecting all of the queries that we have identified before, the, the what that we have identified before, with our actual content and how we use them to produce our content. So it's, it's key to segment them into informational, transactional, and that we know that for informational, we will likely, uh, we're looking forward to, to fulfill these needs with reviews, with advice, with guides, with news. Uh, and then for transactional queries will be uh, to research, to compare, to register, to buy, not only to buy, but to do all of this type of of, of, of actions that to fulfill this type of actions that users usually do when 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 trying to convert in the, in the conversion process too, for every product categories or brands that we're able to offer, and then when we have all of these queries segmented to, to to fulfill all these different these different type of needs, we need to identify which are the areas and levels of our sites that is relevant to target. Uh, them in each case and this is key why because there are so and I'm going to show you a few examples after this uh, there's so many situations where that is not that the website is not targeting a keyword or a query or a very important term but it's that sometimes the page that is ranking for this time is not the right one maybe the, the user is searching for a product and I am ranking with a category page or vice versa the the, the user is looking for uh, a category, a, a product type, and I am ranking with a product page, a very granular page. Uh, and of course, uh, that doesn't fulfill our customer necessity. Uh, the, the, our, the, the conversion in this page is not going to be high. Sometimes we end up also indexing and ger generating so many different pages and content targeting the same query that end up competing against each other, cannibalizing each other, wasting our effort, wasting our precious uh, content, um, production, uh, 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 the, the visibility, right? And, and it's so difficult to, to make this profitable, right? And, and so it's very important that we choose carefully how we are going to target each one of these queries, with which uh, format, in which, from which area of our site, to make sure that we don't overlay uh, targeting the same query with different levels of different areas of our site, uh, making it non, 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 not profitable. And at the end of the day, wasting our resources on time. Uh, which format your content should be based uh, on the content, on the goal, right? Like for, and I love the content, the content matrix that we saw 
made a while ago because this really allows us to see that there are different types of, of content that we can create. Some content is more to fulfill purchases needs, other education needs, other to create awareness for promotion, other more targeted to go towards conversion. And it's important that we connect them with the different type of queries that we are targeting. And also take into consideration the already existing content on, 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 on our site, right? Sometimes it's like we are starting from scratch when it is not true. Uh, opportunity. Uh, there's more SEO process that should be happening right before, the, the, like before, way before the, 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 the website is actually launched. So everything can be very well aligned and, and, and SEO best practices can be taken into consideration. Sadly, unfortunately, we are going to see this is not the case. So this is why I love to always go and check uh, if I already have certain pages targeting these queries, although not necessarily in the best way, maybe, again, I am, I am targeting I am targeting with an existing page that is not necessarily highly optimized for certain query, uh, that, that query already, and maybe I can reuse that. Maybe I can re-optimize that page to, to, to give it more value and to use it to, to actually target that specific query that is really profitable and, and very, with a very high potential for me. And I don't need then to start from scratch. It's better to reuse and, and optimize a content that already exists uh, and for which you are already ranking maybe in the position 30, then try to start ranking with a page that doesn't exist at all that I need to, to create and, and crawl for the first time and, and, and Google needs to, will need to index for the first time and run for the first time. And so it's much, much better to start with something that already exists. So take a look at what we already have. I love this feature of write, write that was previously, previously called on page because they allow you to um, connect with Google Search Console data and show you keywords versus landing pages or pages are ranking for these keywords at the same time, which you know that in Google Search Console is, is, is not possible to do. You need to either go to pages and, and filter and see the keywords for which this page, is, this page is already ranking for or vice versa. And in this case, you can do it like this. It's much, much easier to identify cannibalization issues all those opportunities that you can leverage already and, and for which you already have content that you can re-optimize for and the type of, of performance that already these pages have. And also, how your competition are already this, doing this um, and how they are re-leveraging and going for this, especially high potential uh, terms of queries, those that will really move the needle for you and that are critical not only from a search volume and popularity and relevance perspective, but also from a conversion perspective, right? So you go and check, for example, with districts, which are top uh, directories and, and in your compares websites, which are the, 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 the overall categories that are getting much more visibility in general, how they are being structured, which are they are really making the most out of to, 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 to run with. And why is this important? And this is a perfect example for this. And a lot of people will say, oh, I like that. This was supposed to allow us to see how we can we can connect better our SEO with our customers, right? Well, this is how. Um, ye, this identify queries, this behavior that you have identified from, from your content should give you already enough information in order to create whether a guide like this, for example, backpacking checklist, if you have identified that this is something that uh, your, your backpacking uh, audience are looking for, uh, before or after buying a backpack. This is the type of resources that they, they will like, likely consume, right? Because they want to use that product that you have offered and they, they have bought from you or they're looking to buy in general. And, and then you will be able to create this type of informational type of, 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 of content that will target this need. And a lot of people say, oh, but this need, they, they don't want to bring transaction. It's not transaction driven, right? They will buy from me when they look for a checklist. It's true, they won't necessarily, at least not at that time. They are looking for a checklist, not to buy something. Um, however, you can connect your informational content with your transactional content like this. How right though, those. What from, from the checklist, they linked, when, when, they, when they list all of the products, they link to their category categories, the, the website category, where they offer these products, right? So on one hand, from an SEO perspective, perspective purely SEO perspective, they are passing value, they are passing internal link 
popularity towards these internal categories, also improving their crawlability, um, sending more popularity towards them, and also allowing the users when they, they they will likely save this checklist. They will actually, at some point, also refer it to friends or whatever. It will be much so much easier for them. It's like, oh, remember I had the checklist that not only included the actual items, but they link to them. So they can click on them and generate that conversion. So in an indirect way, we always need to be aware that is that is this like a. a, a a, a, a team, right? We are all always supporting each channel to support each other. So it's not only the, the, about the channel that where the conversion happens, but uh, to create the awareness and to create all the opportunities and enable all the opportunities for the conversion to happen, not necessarily right now, but also afterwards. Then we can answer this other question. When? When are these queries being asked? And I love because well, this is the typical uh, information that we do can easily get from Google Keyword Planner. So what I do is when I generate all of this keyword ideas, I go and even if I have gotten the search volume from SEMrush or Systrix or all of these sources, I go and validate again the, the search volume data from the actual original <laughs> the much more direct search which is the the the, the google, google keyword planner tool right uh, not only to validate and and instead of relying only on one data source uh, but also to identify this is an early and the trend over time and these are three different type of trends that you see here uh, and the, these trends are four different lines of products or product categories of the same site all retail oriented and very, very similar one of the other. And, and you see, they're different. Uh, so it's very important that we validate the zonality and trend, not only aggregating all of the keywords that we are targeting to and try to, to identify something generic for all of them. No, uh, there are certain, some of them that will have certain very specific type of zonality and trend, like let's, let's imagine like for example flowers, for Mother's Day or for Valentine's, right? And, and, and if, if, especially roses, right? So if, if we are a flower shop, we'll see very specific trends for very specific flower type. And the same with backpacks, for example. There are the back to school backpacks will have a very specific seasonality for fitting that specific school uh, schedule that other type of backpacks or for example, carry-ons or travel backpacks won't have. So it's very, very important that we identify this at a very granular, different levels of granularity uh, per, per, per category group. Also, of course, we want to better understand, especially for new industries where we are just starting with the overall industry trend over time and behavior over time, especially for new countries or different countries. Um, we can do take a look at this, like for example, what similar web uh, at, a, at a website level to, or a very granular level per keyword level, we can go and, and, and keyword finder and see what is the specific seasonality for that specific keyword there. And once that we understand when we should really publish each content, like for example, if I intend to really rank for, for something well, I, like I cannot expect that to do that like three weeks before, just publish the first content that three weeks before the, the high seasonality starts, it's, it's too little time. So it, it will help us to, to, to really to establish a schedule that is reasonable with our SEO process, taking into consideration that it's a long-term type of strategy, right? And where, where are these queries happening from? Uh, from which locations on devices? And this is again, very straightforward. And for this, again, this is the type of data that again, cure the, um, the, the, the Google Keyword Planner can, can give us and can fulfill. And this is so important now with SEO because let's remember Google is switching and moving towards a mobile first index in the following months. So it's critical to understand which are the queries that are really much more popular uh, from mobile devices. Which are those terms, those, those categories that are really the the, the ones that are hottest from, to, to do from, 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 to ask for from mobile devices, because they are not necessarily the ones that we are promoting right now and, 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 and prioritizing right now, um, because we have done all this uh, thinking on desktop. So it's critical that we validate this again, um, per group, 
uh, of, of terms and queries uh, using the different categories uh, of, of products, all, on all these different patterns that we saw at the beginning uh, to better understand this behavior and to reorganize our content, our mobile content accordingly, and allowing this content also, if necessary, if we are not indexing it right now, to start to, 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 to index what certain maybe types of categories or, or, or characteristics that we are not using at all. And then the location, where are our users? Even if they are not using um, geolocated terms to search for, it's important that we think that if they are in California, well, maybe they don't need uh, that I, I prioritize uh, so much this this type of, of, of rain, <laughs> rain uh, products, right? Because it, it never rains in, 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 in California or Florida, or well, a little bit more in Florida, but not so much in California. So this type of things, it's very important that we identify and better understand from where they are searching from, not only the, the device, but also the location, the actual location. Even they don't, if they don't search for, ge for geolocated type of terms, they, they don't include the city or, or the country in, 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 in the query, to better connect and better provide something that will connect with them. And this is how, let's use this data now to actually create a strategy that will make sense and, and will allow us to, to, to make the most out of SEO efforts, especially with our content to connect better and fulfill better with this type of behavior that we have identified from our, from our audience. So first thing, a first fundamental issue that you will see in SEO, and probably if you are a SEO, you see it every day, uh, it's like, oh, we need to optimize this content or we need to, to create and to differentiate content, content duplication, content cannibalization, theme content issues. We, we need to, you only have like a paragraph per page. You cannot expect to run well with this if your competitor has like a complete 5,000 words guide, right? How do you expand this? And, and the typical argument and the typical answer from your client is like, oh, but it's, I, how, how can I do this while well, being profitable? It's like, all this content it costs a lot of money it's like how so it, it's important to prioritize of course and it's important to do this um decision based on data and this is the, the data that we have just identified should you index a page or not well it depends does your audience search for what is offered on the page is this page really connected to a query that is popular enough that will, that will likely generate enough traffic to compensate the effort? Yes or no? Is the search volume high enough to compensate the indexation effort? Remember, all this uh, copywriting, the design of this page, the effort to publish it, to maintain it, to moderate it, et cetera, et cetera. Is there enough offering also to be featured on the page? It's not only that a lot of people search for it, it's also the type of, of supply and, and, and how you can fulfill that demand. Remember, this is about supply and demand. This is marketing at the end of the day. So uh, let's, let's think not only if there's enough search volume about this topic, but it's, 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 if this is something that you really want to prioritize to, to rank, if you are able to include a lot of products there, if you have a minimum, minimum um, amount of, 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 of services or categories or products or, or offering around this topic, yes or no? If not, well, likely, even if you, there's a lot of, of, of searches around, around this, this topic, maybe, of course, it's, 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 it's very difficult to say, but maybe it won't be profitable for you if you only have one product around it, right? Uh, and even if you try to generate a lot of content, a good description, whatever, if you end up ranking. So it's important to prioritize your overall um, content optimization process based on this, a supply and demand type of principle, using the data that we have already identified before uh, as an input and, and prioritizing accordingly to make it profitable. Otherwise, of course, it won't be profitable. Of course, you will try to index, let's say, from colors, filters to sizes or etc. right? And this is the typical type of question, especially in e-commerce that uh, the, the, the client will come, the website owner, owner will, will, will come and ask, like, should I be really indexing all these filters or all, all, all this different type of facets here um, for colors, for sizes, for uh, the, 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 the different types? No, it depends. It depends on this. If there are actual searches around all of them on one hand, and on the other hand, if the, you have actually specific products that are actually different to offer and fulfill that, that demand. 
And then this will not only allow us to better identify which is the area and which are the different levels of our content that we should index or not, but develop a category and product pages that will actually perform the role of a salesperson, which is what we want to connect with our customer, right? Uh, and this will be possible because of the type of, of, of research that we have done in, this, in the past. Is, is there an actual offer? Is it available? Are there many colors? How does it compare to others? What other people buy? How can I complement this product? Um, but how does it solve X or Y problem? What other people are end up finding, right? What, we can also incentivize, of course, you, you, user-generated content, increase freshness, uniqueness, and trust. Um, it's a lot of work, but it really works out to differentiate and to develop a unique selling proposition, especially when you are offering a product that many other websites will also end up offering. Um, and this is key, and this is how you connect all of these queries and all of the terms that you had identified before with your actual content, because this is how you are going to be able to answer them and to fulfill them and address them with your actual content. Also, this research will allow you to reorganize your content, to connect with your user intent, and to differentiate them, to not end up having this issue of, oh, my categories and subcategories are the same, or they are featuring the same, listing the same, the pro the same products. So it's, it's, it's like, well, what's the point of them, right? Uh, no, it, it, you need to organize each levels of, of your site to better connect with that intent that you identify in, your, in, in the research before. The homepage uh, or, or, or the first level category, they should be hops like this. They, they, you cannot already be thinking about listing an actual, uh, actual products over there because the, the type of intent that people want to have when, when searching for something so broad, so, so generic, like for example, uh, cycling, it's not, you don't know if they look for, for helmets or for bicycles or for uh, jackets or for backpacks or for, for going bicycling, right? So it's, it's, it's so important to take this into, the, into consideration and, and organize our content accordingly to connect with that type of intent that we identify better. And this is how we are going to avoid this issue. This is a it's very common, very common issue that kills conversion, that don't fulfill and then connect with a customer um, intent. And, and really it's a bad experience when, for example, searching for backpacks with wheels for traveling. Take a look through position from Amazon. I click on it. It's a product page. It's, it's not a listing, right? And, and I don't want to go to a product page. I'm looking for backpacks in general, not a specific backpack uh, from a specific brand. So they should be showing me a listing instead, like the one to the right, right? It should be this type of, of page that should be uh, ranking for me to, to, to really actually do what I expect to do on, on their site and end up buying from them and, and, and selecting the best choice for me. Then prioritizing based on identified trends and leverage high seasonality to Father's Day, for example, is so, so, so important that we reorganize. And this is why it's important to identify the seasonality right at the beginning and, and, and to connect that with the type of, of direct accesses and the organization and the navigation besides our marketing overall marketing promotion of course but our SO efforts and, and the type of how, how we organize and how we promote and how we outreach and how we optimize each one of these pages should be connected and should be aligned towards it so you can see this landing page for Father's Day should be like really ranking for these terms that we have identified that are being searched for, for this specific, uh, specific seasonality, Father's Day gifts, ideas for Father's Day. Uh, so these are, if these are the keywords, these are, these are the ones that I should feature on the title, with the descriptions, headings, and, and provide all the options and use this, this page as a landing page that I can reuse time over time. Um, and this is why it's, it's critical to establish rules for expired products and campaigns, um, and for the overall uh, life of our content, right? Um, if, if something is it's not available anymore, this is when the issue comes. It's not when we publish something new. That, that is pretty cool. Now it's, oh, let's publish, okay. Like, does it have a, a demand? Yes, do we have a supply? Yes, it's published. What happens when like, we run out of, out of stock of that product, right? This is when the problem comes. So when Father Days ends, and there is not going to be another one in one year, right? So it's very important to establish this rule. If, if the product campaign is not available anymore and it's not permanent, 
it's, it's going to happen again next year or after X amount of time and we know it, we don't want to eliminate it. We don't want to remove it. We don't want to turn out one redirect it towards another one. We want to keep it there. So next time, next seasonally, when it comes, we are even stronger. And we already capitalized the, the external links that this page at some point attracted. And, and we just need to optimize, re-optimize the, 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 the year potentially from, from, from the title, the descriptions, all these elements where we had added the year before. And we reuse it again and again, become stronger every, every time. And, and like this is how we are going to be able to compete better with this, with this landing page. Um, if it is something that has really run out of stock and we will never have it again, like never, then yes, we can 201 redirect. We should 201 redirect to, the, to a newer version of the product or to an upper level category, a uh, pairing category of, of that product to continue giving a, a good, um, a good user experience while keeping also the, the benefit of whatever this page has been able to run for. Um, but of course, not just eliminated it and, and, and that's it, right? Even if, if we are not sure completely, for example, if we are going to have that product again, like in three months or, or less, for example, we can uh, include that out of stock uh, type of, of of warning there on the page and say, look, this out of stock right now, you can come back uh, and you can leave your, your email here and we are going to alert you when we have this product back so you don't need to be coming back again and again. And there are all of these other very related products, very similar products that you can also buy because people who have bought this had ended up buying these other products here. So you also fulfill the type of intent. We're using these pages and of them that do match with each of queries. This is what big, big retailers do, for example, for Black Friday here. And it's about updating and reusing and profit, profiting from, from this seasonality, connecting again with the type of behavior of our client and how we make sure that we are not only able to run number one and we are on first positions and that's it, but that we actually achieve this. We are with our SEO process because we are really customer driven because we really care and we focus on conversions and we maximize all of our SEO process activities to connect with our customer needs. Thank you very much. I hope that you have enjoyed it and that you have learned um, a few things uh, hopefully from, from this. Um, very looking forward to hear your, your questions uh, hopefully and uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity, Talia. Hi. This has been so interesting. I have had people texting me saying, wow, she's making me interested in SEO. <laughs> just... Not... Mission accomplished. That was yes. nice. <laughs> exactly. We actually have tons of questions, but we're over time, and we've got people already waiting in the other session. But um, what I'm gonna do, as I promised, um, every session there's gonna be a recording and there's going to be uh, session comments and stuff. And if Elena can, she'll send us the presentation or the PDF. We'll and do. Then we will share everything. And I will also send you all the questions that people asked so that you can answer them. Uh, you can all follow Elena on Twitter, right? Yes, I am actually. Thank you very much, and sorry for the initial technical problems. Good thing that it worked at the end. I will be <laughs> uploading my, my slides, um, if it is okay, Talia, or if you want, I can send the PDF to you, and you can share it with, with the audience too. Yeah, both, it's fine. And I am also in, in Twitter, and I am very active, so if you have any question right now, you can go and, and ask the questions there. I'll be happy to, to answer as, as much as possible. And for all of the resources and everything, you will also the, will have the links and, and, in the slides, or you can ask me too, and I will be happy to refer. Thank you for the opportunity okay. again. Yeah, thank you very much, Aleda. Um, everyone, don't worry, you'll get all the slides and all the resources. I'm going to end the broadcast now, and I'm going to pull you in to the next room where you will see me again. <laughs> so, okay. we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.